Well, Utah was looking to become the next state to join 11 other states that have already enacted this legislation. But thanks to Governor Spencer Cox, it looks like that won't be happening. What is the bill? What is it all about? How are people reacting? We're going to discuss all of that and more in just a second, guys. First, though, if you could please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, guys, let me mention to you, please go check me out over on my Rumble page. That link is down below. Go give me a sub there. These videos also go out on that platform. You can leave your comments there without any issues. YT has really been going after the comments on these videos, it's completely taking them away, censoring them, removing them, not giving me the opportunity to even, you know, reply to you in some cases, vice versa. It's crazy. So, if you want to be able to get involved in the conversation without any problems, head on over to Rumble. Now, let's talk about Utah. This was on Friday that the state legislature had, well, put together this legislation. And this came as a shock to many because, well, they weren't expecting it because Governor Spencer Cox was working on a different kind of a plan for student athletes. What type of student athletes? Well, the conversation that we have been hearing about in this country now over oh, the better part of two years. Should boys and girls sports be kept separate or should we intermingle them? And I think you know what I mean by saying that, right? All the talk about female sports and letting people who are not female come on in and play on the team. That's what we're talking about here with Utah, as they passed this in the state Senate and in the House that would say that, well, if you're a female, your sports are for you. That's it. No one else. No one claiming to be something else. Nobody coming from a, a planet far, far away in another land who says that they are just like you females, but really they're not. They're different but they would not be allowed to play on those female sports teams. Governor Spencer Cox of Utah was furious upon hearing of the passage of this legislation that it would be heading to his desk. Now, why would a Republican governor be so upset about this in a state of Utah upon everything else? Why? You would think that he would be in full support of this. But no, Spencer Cox vowed that he will veto, that's right, he will veto the legislation because he doesn't think it's right. <laughs> you see, Spencer Cox has had multiple conversations with these certain individuals who want to play on the girls' sports teams. That Spencer Cox says, you know, it's not their fault. They have been caught up in the politics of this whole conversation, and it's not fair to them. You know, they are of the rainbow community. And, well, he said that he was going to do everything he could to protect them. Again, a Republican governor. Those that voted for Spencer Cox, you didn't get what you thought. Right? And I've talked about Spencer. Good old Spence. I've talked about Spence. He has been very hostile towards conservatives, Republicans, his own state when it comes to mandates, comments that he has made about those that don't want to play ball and get the jibbity jab, jab, jab. Yeah, I've covered it all. So this is, to me, not a surprise. Well, what was it specifically that Spencer Cox was working on before this legislation to keep the female sports teams exclusive to them. What was he trying to work on? I'm going to get to that in a second, guys. First, let me mention, if you are able to make a generous donation here to my ministry to help support what I do, I'd greatly appreciate that. I'm demonetized here on YouTube. They don't support me in any way. But if you guys enjoy my daily content here, talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines, and you want to send a message to YouTube saying, you know what? You may not like what he does, but we enjoy it. You guys can help me out over on PayPal that link down below, or you can sign up on Patreon. When you do that, you get access to my bonus content. All the links for the YouTube videos are included there as well, so you guys get alerted every time new content comes out because YT doesn't always alert you 
and over there also you can comment censorship free completely 100 percent i mean that's really going to be for the people that want to you know have serious conversations about this stuff only for the patreon members also you can reach out to me in direct messages there as well so don't forget that all the links down below big big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so thank you as well your generosity so greatly appreciated now, what Spencer Cox was working on was this special commission. Uh, he wanted to put together something that would appease both sides, which you know oftentimes is not going to work. This would be a special commission board that would be made up of experts in sports, but also experts in rainbow health for those rainbow individuals. So they would work collectively together. And any time that you would have one of these individuals from the rainbow community come forward and say they want to play sports for the girls team, they would have to go before the commission and they would debate this between the sports expert, the rainbow health expert, and then they would make a decision based off that as to whether or not this particular student could play on the team. I don't know how they were going to come to that conclusion, but Spencer Cox thought this was the best decision moving forward on how to appease both sides. Now, advocates for the rainbow community, they were not so happy about this because they believed that this, well, unfairly targeted these members here of the rainbow tribe that, well, they would be unfairly judged having to go before a panel to have the fate of their sports career decided upon in such a manner so they weren't really up for it i mean for them they accepted it as it was better than an outright ban altogether but they weren't such a huge fan of this whole commission thing but i guess they were willing to take it had legislation passed uh in the senate and the house that would be in favor of this commission but this is what surprised spencer cox they go in here they do the votes instead they amend it they switch it up they go for an outright ban. It passes. It's now on Spencer's desk. Again, he said that he is going to veto this. Now, they would have the two-thirds majority to be able to override the, gov the governor's veto. So you would expect that, okay, well then we should expect this bill to go into law. Not necessarily, because there is also a handful of Republicans who were initially against this outright ban. And so they think that they could play a role potentially in stopping an override. Now, maybe not, but from what we're hearing with reports, that could end up being the case. Now, for those that did in fact vote for the ban, that actually, if you want to call it compromise or whatever, some of them actually voted for this because they just think that the courts are just going to block this anyway. Let's say the governor does sign it into law. Well, they've already seen in so many other states that have already passed similar legislation that judges have just gone out and blocked it anyway. Now, if that's the case, then what they amended here in the bill was that it would fall back then on the commission anyway. So if it passes, Spencer Cox were to sign it, a judge blocks it, then this whole commission rule goes back into effect again. The rainbow athletes go before this commission and then they have their fate decided that way as to whether or not they're going to play on the girls team. So this is the thinking that a lot of them had in this uh, decision before making the vote. How it all shakes out from here, who knows? But the main thing to point out is that Spencer Cox is a rhino and you should be aware of this come voting time when you go to vote for a new governor. Now, I think you're going to have to be waiting for a little bit because I think he's going to be in there. I think at least for a few more years, I don't believe he is actually up uh, for re-election this year. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure he just came into the picture not too long ago. But if you're in Utah, someone can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, and anybody who is not willing to protect female sports 100%, uh, you, you got some issues. You, you got some repenting to do uh, because, well... You're crossing lines as it comes to to God. And <laughs> unless you repent, that's not something you want to do. Let's just say that. And I think you know what I mean.
But why is it all happening, ladies and gentlemen? It's because we're in the last days and Jesus is coming back soon. In fact, if you have not yet received him as your Lord and Savior, well, I want to take this opportunity right now to get you to invite Christ into your life. How do you do it? Well, this is a prayer you can do. And it's one to be taken very seriously. You can do it in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today because he is coming back soon. You want to be ready to meet him when he does. You want to spend eternity with the Lord. First thing you want to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner. That's something that we all are. But God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from that sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk to you soon.